On this episode of Living the Dream, Captain Jimmy and Louisa are back at Hotel Casa del Golfo in El Salvador. This time, they head to a coffee farm to get an inside look at the operation. They hit a local island for an authentic El Salvadorian seaside lunch. And they fish until the sun meets the horizon. Whoa. It's a good fish, guys. Oh, oh the rooster. It's a rooster! Good fish. job. Well done, Louisa. Wow. Woo. Good job. Wow. All right. Check it out. For Jimmy and Louisa, it's their second day in El Salvador at the luxury coastal hotel Casa del Golfo. And two days is plenty to sink into this beautiful resort. Located on the coast in the remote region of El Tamarindo, Hotel Casa del Golfo boasts its own private beach onto which the Pacific Ocean rolls its waves. In the center of the property, amid the towering palms, is the hotel's very own in-ground pool. Surrounding the pool are the hotel's stylish rooms, each one with a special name and a beautifully designed and decorated atmosphere. Inside is a comfortable space with a large bed, tiled floors, unique headboards, a tropical theme, and a large bathroom with a tiled shower and vanity. For more info, visit them online at casadelgolfosv.com or on Instagram at Casa del Golfo SV. Before heading to the boat, Jimmy and Louisa sit down for breakfast at the hotel's restaurant, which is open air, offers great ocean views, and is just steps from each of the hotel room doors. After a delicious meal, they meet up with hotel owner and avid fisherman, Jose, and his wife, Anadella. They hop in the transport and leave Hotel Casa del Golfo to make a short drive to Iguana Bay, a nearby day resort for the locals. miles around the peninsula, the boat awaits them anchored just offshore. So they make their way to the beach, grizzly cooler in hand, to hop on a panga for transport to the fishing boat. If today's anything like their first day in El Salvador, Jimmy and Louisa are in for an adventure. The large volcanic islands that dot the bay make for a splattered chain connecting El Salvador to its neighboring countries, Honduras and Nicaragua and they also make for the perfect environment for inshore fishing, leaving deep chasms and rocky hideaways on which the fish will congregate. But whether the fish are on or not, Jose has something special in store for Jimmy and Louisa, an authentic El Salvadorian feast on one of the many islands they'll be fishing around. But there's no need for a backup plan to fill the hours, because as soon as they anchor the boat and Jimmy drops his Palomar jig in the water, the first fish is on. <laughs> oh boy, here we go guys, showtime! Look at that, first fish of the morning and what is it? Oh, it's a big old Sierra. 
Oh, I'm so lucky he didn't cut me off. Let's fling him in. All right. Check out the chompers on him. Look at that, guys. On the Palomar flat side jig. I'm gonna try flinging that jig. Look at that, look how lucky I got caught. I'm gonna have to get cut off with the teeth on that mackerel. It's crazy. That's why I put the wire on the Ninja. <laughs> this one we just got real lucky not to lose and that's gonna make some ceviche right there. Real good ceviche with that guy. Live in the Dream with Captain Jimmy Nelson is made possible by Salt Life, Live Salty, Grizzly Coolers, envisioned, engineered, and perfected for performance. Decket, never compromise, demand the best. And by American Fishing Wire. After breakfast at Hotel Casa del Golfo, Jimmy and Louisa headed out to the bay to fish inshore. When they anchored, Jimmy tied on a Palomar jig with some fluorocarbon leader. This is a 100 pound Palomar fluorocarbon, a little heavier. And about as soon as the jig hit the water, the first fish was on. Oh, there it is, fish on! Woo! Yeah. <laughs> oh boy, here we go guys, showtime! It's first fish in the morning and what is it? Oh, it's a big old Sierra. They're fun to catch and make for some great ceviche, but Jimmy's hoping to avoid landing another Sierra mackerel. So they head for a quick bait stop and relocate to drop some live bait into the water. What I'm doing here is I'm just going through the nostrils of these guys. It's kind of a hard spot. They hold real good there, and if the boat's moving, it just pulls that bait through the water face first. Where if I was bottom fishing for grouper or something, I would hook it through the back, drop it to the bottom, and that thing's just gonna be wiggling on one spot because I'm gonna be anchored, and the grouper will come up and pick it up. In this case, we're gonna be slowly drifting, just kind of barely bump trolling, bumping it in and out of here to keep the bait moving forward over these rocks. And we're hoping for a snapper. Vera snapper, Colorado snapper, they have barred snapper out here. Well, a lot of different types of snapper. So uh, that's probably the, the main fish we're targeting right now. We're real lucky we can catch broomtail grouper or some of the other types of cabria and things that they may have hanging out on these rocks. That's where all the commercial fishermen are, so we're probably in a good spot. The bite is light today, and as morning approaches high noon, it's even lighter. Jimmy and Louisa aren't complaining. There's no shortage of beautiful sights to be seen here in El Salvador. But as they slip into the next hour without any action on the live bait, Captain Jose decides it's time to show Jimmy and Louisa a true coastal El Salvadorian lunch. Jose anchors the boat in the horseshoe-shaped bay of Isla Mayanguera del Golfo, one of the larger islands found in the Gulf of Fonseca. The locals that live here have been harvesting these waters from generation to generation for over a millennium. If you're looking for some properly made seafood, this is exactly the kind of place that you'll want to find it. 
On shore, their feast is being prepared by the family-owned and operated restaurant Mariscadas Guerrero, located on La Playa El Mahahual. Everything is made by hand and from scratch, and the ingredients they use are sourced locally, straight from the earth and sea. Back on the water, Jimmy and Louisa hitch a ride on a panga and head to shore. For the locals, these small skiffs are their livelihood. They are easy to fish from and easy to transport up and down the bay to pull from their fish nets and lobster traps. They make for pretty good boats too, allowing them to ferry their customers from their large fishing rigs ashore. The beach is even more beautiful from shore, and after soaking it in, Jimmy and Louisa head down the beach to their table, where lunch is served. At Mariscadas Guerrero, they serve incredible seaside dishes like fried fish, stuffed lobster, fried lobster tails, baked garlic shrimp, all served alongside fresh salads and Spanish rice. Look at the size of that thing. It's huge. That looks tasty. It's an absolute giant shrimp. Wow, you guys have no idea what you're in store for. You guys are known for your shrimp in this area, right, Jose? Yeah. You guys catch these locally? Yeah. Did they get much right. bigger than this? Because they're already like almost the size yeah, of These are some of the biggest shrimp I've ever seen. Like a tiny no, bit bigger, but not mm -hmm. much. Not much, not much more. Mm -hmm. It's been less than an hour since this meal was either plucked from a branch or pulled from the ocean and now it sits before them beautifully prepared. After the break, Jimmy and Louisa will head back to the boat to see if they can troll down more fish in shore. Live in the Dream with Captain Jimmy Nelson is made possible by C and H Lures, be a winner with C and H Lures. Plantation on Crystal River, the place to stay and play along Florida's nature coast. And by Salt Life, live salty. After an island feast, Captain Jose of Hotel Casa del Golfo has started trolling, and Jimmy and Louisa are rigging things up for the evening bite. What I'm tying on right now is some Palomar 60 pound leader. The reason I'm using heavy leader is because there's big fish, little fish, there's all kinds of stuff in here. But apparently we have a bunch of Sierra mackerel in the area. So uh, we're gonna tie on some poppers. We're gonna tie on some of the Palomar ninjas. That's the jig that you cast and reel back in with the J hook. They have the J hook style and the treble hook. And uh, with this heavier leader, like I said, if you don't have wire on it, it's gonna be a little more difficult for those fish to cut us off. So we don't know if we're going to run into snapper, we don't know if it's going to be the mackerel. We're just going to prepare for both. And what I'm tying here is just a double uni knot from my braid down to my fluorocarbon. You guys look at that. See, we got the two, the two knots, let's pull them together. And that knot just won't break because no matter how hard you pull, all it does is clinch down tighter against itself. Thank you, Louisa. Uh oh, wow. 
nice surprise. Good dude. job on the oh Rapala. Gosh, yes. Got a little soaked back there, but it was worth it. Oh, for sure. Holy smokes. They're here. Oh, yeah. It's been a good day. We went out this morning, got some mackerel, caught a few, got a few cut off. Went and had an amazing lunch on the beach. Yep. Just put the lines out on the way into the dock. Right away, Louisa hooked up into this rooster. Woohoo! Pretty little guy. Yep. All right, well, let's get him back in the water because he's ready to go, okay? Oh, yeah, I'm sure there's more out there. Heck yeah. For rooster fish that I just caught here in El Salvador. Alright, about to release him. Before the break, Louisa trolled up an El Salvadorian rooster. After releasing that rooster, her line is back out, and as the sun sets, Louisa hooks into another fish. With another incredible day of fishing and feasting in El Salvador in the books, Jimmy and Louisa head back to shore. As the sun starts to dip below the horizon, Jose guides the boat through Iguana Bay to anchor. The fish caught weren't many today, but they were plenty amid an island feast and witnessing a scenery like no other. Tomorrow brings an early wake-up call, but they'll spend the day on land, so they head back to Hotel Casa del Golfo and tuck into its comfortable suites. Next morning, they hop in the transport, and from Hotel Casa del Golfo in El Tamarindo, they head north to the mountainous outskirts of San Miguel. Their destination is Jose's Coffee Farm. Passed down from his father, the operation began with less than 20 acres and has grown to nearly 1,000, harvesting hundreds of thousands of pounds of fresh coffee beans every season. It's sweet. There's nothing on them. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Coffee, huh? Mm -hmm. Café? Mm -hmm. Coffee. Pretty good. Jose gives them the grand tour, and Jimmy and Louisa get to see the harvesting process from tree to export. The trees themselves and the hundreds of acres they stand on grow up the face of a massive, active volcano. The steep terrain on which the farm sits has kept things traditional and simple. Every season, each bean is picked by hand by hundreds of harvesters. They carry the fruit from the trees down from the volcano to the plant, where they're sent through a long wash process. From there, they are funneled onto the drying slab. Made from stone and concrete, this large slab is where the fruit is laid out to dry. For days, the coffee will bake in the hot Central American sun until it is rid of its water and the bean inside hardens. The fruit is then stripped from the bean and the bean is laid out to dry the same way the fruit did. This step is key in the harvesting process and cannot be rushed. After enjoying the incredible views of the valley and neighboring farms and volcanoes jutting from the earth, they head back down to the farmhouse where they set a campfire to fight off the cold the high altitude brings with it. For more fishing and diving action, follow Captain Jimmy on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and TikTok at Captain Jimmy Nelson.